Hi guys, it's me Karen. I'm moving on with the stones I had picked out a few weeks ago. And this is the next one up. This is cinnabar and a little garnet. And I even drew out a design I'm thinking of. So um, I'm working with my malfunctioning camera mount or my phone mount. It's, um, I, I've got a new one ordered, but I've got this thing taped up. <laughs> Just when you think things are going well, you know, you know how that goes. Something, something else happens, but we're moving on. Nothing's going to stop me <laughs> except my own mind. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be in sterling silver. And because the stones are so much different in uh, wall height, as you can see, I have to use different size bezel wire. Now, they're the same plain wire, but they're vastly different sizes. This one, I think, is a 3 16th, which is really for the you know shorter stones. This one is probably the standard, and I want to say it's probably um, one eighth of an inch, maybe. Uh, I know, I've told you guys, I'm not real good with um, fractions and stuff. But okay, I'm gonna um, measure and cut out the bezel and get those soldered and then move on to the back plate because I do want to do some texturing on this. Okay, I am ready to solder, and I am trying a little bit different technique without any cross locking pliers or titanium clips, because I did get confirmation today from a jeweler friend of mine that, yeah, those can, um, you know, put too much pressure on the metal, especially when it gets heated, and, um, so this is what he uses, just two charcoal blocks to create that like oven effect to heat from the bottom and just uh, try to go at it. And I sanded the bottom of the bezels, but this is two separate bezels <laughs> that I'm also trying to do. So fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed. So here we go.
I tried to use the torch in my left hand and the pick in my right, and I totally dislodged the whole thing. <sighs> Aggravating. Well, I was so flustered uh, when that ended that I sat there for a second and thought, well, it doesn't look like it's out of place. It just looks like it lifted up. So I just went right back at it with kind of uh, <clears throat> unbridled determination, we'll say. I figured, oh, well, if I melt this whole thing, so be it. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> And it worked. Oh my God. <laughs> so I don't know. Am I too timid? Am I worried? Am I. I think I just need more confidence, guys, because I didn't melt anything that I can see. Uh, it's not even as warped as the last one. In fact, it really isn't warped at all. The both the stones fit, so I just thought I'd share that with you. Oh my gosh, I'm sure y'all can relate to that complete frustration and just ready to walk away. But I was like, I'll walk away after I melt this sucker. <laughs> and so that was an option that I was willing to take. And that's a pretty big piece of silver I would have been uh given up just for being aggravated two inches long yeah two inches long by a little over an inch wide so that's quite a plus the bezel wires but i guess that's what was needed because it worked and now I need to move on, and then I'm still thinking about um, a bail. I want to do something. Okay, I just thought I'd share that with you. Yay! Oh my gosh. I'll be okay with that. And now we are moving on to the sanding part with the radials. I've done as much filing as I think I need. Got the bail on okay. And now I'm going to go through all these radial wheels before I set the stones. So I'm going to um, do a polish with the Fabulous Luster before I tumble and then I'm going to highlight these areas and then I'll set the stone I think is the progression let's give this a little try of course wear a mask You guys I don't I can't imagine <laughs> that a tumbler will get it any better than this do you I mean that's kind of why I don't take it that step but I am on this piece but I don't know if the um, I'm gonna use acrylic because again I like that really dark uh, highlight instead of patina so I'm gonna try that now. I love this piece, even without the stones. <laughs> I mean, I could see like 
pouring some kind of resin, doing a resin piece in something like this would be fabulous. So this is an awesome setting, I think. Um, I'm still learning how hard to hit the stamping. I thought I did pretty good until I went back and kind of added a little bit more. Uh, well, it was, wasn't close enough to the bezel for my liking, so I went back in after the bezel was attached. And I probably should have waited, but I'm gonna show you the back and you can see where the first round, and you can see the lighter uh, areas down here, though you can still see the highlighting, but you can really see the highlighting on this side because that was where I came back. And now watch, see? You can't really see the stamping effect so much on this side, but when I came back that second time and gave it a little extra, that's where you can see it. So I'm still learning. And um, the initials, hmm, I tried to just do it with one tap and you know, it's not great. Same with the 925, but um, you know, let's just practice, I guess. Everything can't turn out great, but hey, I'm happy I didn't melt this whole thing. <laughs> okay, off to the tumbler, and we'll see what it looks like after tumbling. Wow, I can't imagine it looking better than this. Oh, and I even textured the little bale up here a little bit. Okay, I'll be back. So look at that. I think it, this is after the tumbler. It almost looks like there's little divots in there. Oh, look. So I don't like that. So I'm gonna try polishing it again with the Fabuluster. See if I can get that shine back. I wonder what that's all about. If anybody knows, please comment why the tumbler would make it not as shiny and almost take the shine away. Huh. All right, I'm gonna do some Fabuluster again and clean it up with soap and water and come back. But interesting, huh? Weird. So it's bringing the shine back. I mean, you can see it's bringing the shine back, but it isn't doing anything to resolve those little divot kind not divots, but like, I don't know what you'd call it, but I sure don't like it. But you can see the difference between where I put the Fabuluster on and what it came out of the tumbler looking like. But like I say, those itty bitty little, I don't know what you'd call them, are still there. <sighs> so, <laughs> back to the radio wheels. Okay, guys, so this is after, um, wow, it sure looks different on camera. And I have my magnifying glasses on. Um, but this is after going back through four uh, different grits of radio wheels and applying the Fabuluster again. At least I got rid of those um, weird divot things, but wow. I can see a lot of scratches up close. Do you see those? Hmm. You know what, guys? I'm going to take this opportunity to try something I have not tried yet. And this was, this stuff was gifted to me by the couple that gave me all this equipment also. And I just have not gotten around to using it. I understand you use Tripoli. is kind of a a compound to help remove real small scratches. And then this red rouge, of course, is what every jeweler from the beginning of time <laughs> has used. And I just haven't, because I've heard it can make quite a mess. And typically the stuff 
these big bricks you can see are used with a um, bench polisher which I still have not set that up yet because I don't have the right table. I wanted to get a table that was on wheels, but sturdy enough that I can bolt that sucker down. Because I don't have one of those dust collector cabinets and I would want to take it outside um, to do this work. Anyway, for multiple reasons, I haven't set that up yet. So I haven't used this stuff because I have to go outside and still use a mask. So let me go do that and see what the results are. Because I didn't even notice these scratches earlier, like before the tumbler. So I'm wondering, I may go back and look at that and see if maybe these were created by the tumbler? No. Maybe I just missed them? I don't know, but I, I gotta get better at this polishing too. So I'll be back. Well, you guys, what's your opinion? I can't really tell. I think it helped. I mean, when you turn it at certain angles, I can still see those scratches, so I don't know. I mean, it sure is shiny and I can't see the, uh, those scratches like with just my bare eyes. <laughs> so I don't know if they're like, even with my magnifying glasses on, I don't see what I see through the camera. Like through the camera is a lot. So maybe I have way more to learn about polishing than I even imagined. But this is with the Tripoli and the Red Rouge, just using my Dremel tool and different heads. And you, you have to keep those compounds absolutely separate and don't contaminate the brushes and all that. So I even didn't wear finger cots with uh, one of them. I think I used it with the Tripoli and not with the Rouge. And I probably should have done it backwards because that Rouge is a mess. It gets everywhere. But, um, and an update on the finger cuts versus the um, elastic bandage. I like this okay, but what I found, because of the way I work in particular, I have to take frequent breaks. I don't work just nonstop. If I worked nonstop, it would be probably economical and, and better to use these, you know, put them on, leave them on all day. But, you know, I have to take them off to go rest and whatnot. And so I've already gone through probably a third of this roll. So it's gonna end up not, I don't think, being economical. <laughs> Just my two cents. Try it out though, it's not expensive. Okay, I'm going to just set the stone. And then no that I need a lot more lessons in everything. <laughs> Let's just be real. And my poor camera thing, my, um, oh, Geez, holder, phone holder, camera holder, phone holder that's mounted. It's um, it's broken and I have a new one coming tomorrow. So I'm just trying to make do. But let me get the stones in there with the fl uh, floss to make sure that they still fit. <laughs> you know, well, I'll do that here. I'm just trying to keep the videos not super long because it does take a while to upload things. Okay, cool. So that fits. And let's make sure this fits. I think 
if you turn it around. No, I don't know which way it was. Let me bring that out a little bit. It may very well have gotten distorted. Am I on camera? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I think this is moving. Sorry guys. Let me get reset up because this isn't this isn't working for me. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, now I'm going to do my best not to scratch. Anything, the silver or the stone. It looks pretty wonky, right? Lots to fill in. Let me work on this off camera so I don't waste all this time. And uh, as a reminder, this is probably the second maximum third time, but twice in the recent um, time that I've worked with plain bezel. And I know I've mentioned this to you guys before that I prefer the decorative bezel because it's so much easier to work with. Um, it's, a, it's typically like 24 gauge sterling whereas these plain bezel wires are fine silver and they're really easy to bend and all that but if if i can show you what i'm talking about it the plain ones are not forgiving <laughs> they show every little ripple every little lump and bump and so I have heard, and I'm trying to practice what I've heard, is you have to use your little hammer a lot more with your bezel pusher to um, kind of, you know, give it that extra, uh, I don't know the correct terminology, contact smoothness. And then you have to use your other burnisher and burnish, 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 burnish. Did I say burnish? Burnish, 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 burnish to smooth all of that out. Because I don't know, I think you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. You can see the little ripples and whatnot. And so that's why I cheat. It's kind of cheating. <laughs> To use the gallery wire. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly before. The gallery wire is where I started, <clears throat> excuse me, because someone had told me it was easier for beginners because it was um, easier to form, it was easier to solder the ends together and then to set your stone because it's a heavier gauge and it's decorative, so it hides a lot of flaws, whereas these plain bezel wires and settings will show all those little imperfections. But it is also the preferred for professional jewelers, if you notice. 
most use the plain. So I'm gonna continue and burnish, burnish, burnish. Did I say burnish? <laughs> but it's, isn't it nice? I'm really loving this. Yeah, really digging this. Okay, I'll be back. And here it is. I think it looks fantastic. I paired it with a long, um, this is sterling silver. I think it's kind of a snake. It's called a snake chain, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's probably 24 inches, it's pretty long. But this is, you know, over two inch long pendant, so that would be appropriate, but isn't it gorgeous, guys? Garnet and cinnabar. Wow, wow, wow. I love this piece. And of course, I'm gonna wear it tonight, tonight. Just around the house. And um, I have the perfect shirt on. <laughs> or it's a dress, actually. But it matches colors, so I'll wear this. I always test my pieces and make sure there aren't any scratchy things or pokey bits or, you know, what have you. But um, I love this so much. Really, really proud of this one, especially since I thought I screwed it up. <laughs> right? Happy surprise. I've been having a lot of those lately, haven't I? Okay, guys, thanks so much for um, your comments that keep coming in. I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate your financial support and any means that you feel fit. If you're gaining value from any of these tutorials, it's greatly appreciated because something's always breaking, like my poor little phone holder. Um, I have it all taped up. <laughs> anyway, the new one will be here tomorrow. Okay, have a fabulous weekend, you guys. I appreciate you so, so, so much.